said the commitment at least of the National Department of Health HIV AIDS unit to work in partnership as Zaki says it's been heavy remember we are out there also working for the same goals and I wish you well and we're here still working together for us, this has been a remarkable Congress. We believe that this creates the basis for a treatment plan that we, Treatment Action Campaign, Kasatu, and all of civil society will put to NEDLAC, and we hope it will be taken forward from there to SANAC and to the government, and that we will have access to antiretroviral therapy and the proper treatment of HIV in our country. While antiretrovirals are only part of the answer to surviving HIV, the vast majority of people will need them if they are to sustain health and life. The 1990s were the decades in which millions became infected with HIV. The first decade of the new century is marked by high mortality rates from AIDS-related diseases. In South Africa alone, over 600 people are dying daily from AIDS. When my sweetheart is dying, how can I sing a love song? When my brother is dying, how can I sing a love song? When my, when my mother is dying, South Africa, now is the time to stand up for your, for, for your right. Treatment plan now. See you to Vega, see you to Bambili, see you to Babunya, see you to Nova, see you to Nova, see you to Nova. In February 2003, the TAC organized a national march at the opening of the parliament to demand a national treatment plan. Over 20,000 people attended. The TAC made it clear that a program of peaceful, non-violent civil disobedience would begin unless government responded positively. That we accept government, we accept the legitimacy of the government, we want to change its policy. But we are prepared to sacrifice to change that policy. And the sacrifice we make is being prepared to go to jail. Faced with continued government stonewalling, we commenced a campaign of peaceful, disciplined and non-violent civil disobedience. During the campaign, many TAC activists succumbed to AIDS, including Sarah Lalele, Edward Mabunda, Charlene Wilson, Kebareng Moketsi, and over a hundred others. This action is based on fundamental principle, which we all admire. The admiration for him is not confined only uh, to the Western Cape or South Africa. People far beyond our borders are aware of the principle stand that he has taken. The TAC's work in mobilizing communities to take control of the pandemic has been recognized in a series of awards. The MTV Free Your Mind Award. We are honored to accept this award on behalf of the Treatment Action Campaign and to all people living with HIV AIDS. The Jonathan Mann Award and the Nelson Mandela Health and Human Rights Award. On the 8th of August, 2003, Cabinet announced that government was going to commence an antiretroviral treatment program for the country and appointed a task team to formulate a plan for the rollout. This announcement is the crowning achievement of four years of struggle to place treatment on the national agenda. And there's a lot of hard work that lies ahead. You see, where do we want to start? What do we want? From today on, every one of us must make sure the TAC campaigns with other organizations like New Women's Movement, like Molo Songololo, like all the organizations that we've worked with, that we campaign for a people's healthcare service in this country. Because at the moment, our healthcare service is not dealing with the needs of poor people enough. The most difficult task for the TAC now lies ahead to support the rollout of the treatment plan. The most important tasks are to ensure adherence to the treatment regimen, 
and that people are empowered to react quickly to any side effects of the medication. This will require an expanded treatment literacy program. The rollout will have to be phased. Tragically, many people will die while waiting for access to medication. The TAC feels that we have a responsibility to find treatment for our members who have fought for treatment and have been role models of openness in their communities. This is the task of the TAC treatment project, which will bring affordable treatment to 1,000 activists and members of the communities which support them by the end of 2004. We can only do this with your support. With government's commitment to implement a national treatment plan, 2004 dawned hopefully. There was a spirit of optimism. The TAC stressed that we were willing to work with the government to ensure the success of the rollout. We are demanding from the health minister a timetable for the implementation of the treatment plan. Western Cape and Gauteng together have got close to 10,000 people on treatment. We would like to say to Farid and to the Western Cape government that we commend your efforts to begin to implement the treatment plan to save lives. The rollout began slowly, but as more sites opened up across the country, thousands of people were successfully put on treatment. This was a huge victory for TAC and all South Africans. It was late, it was slow, but it was happening. KTC clinic Batikum and Tumela good Dr. Peter Saitsi. Dr. Peter Watukum, Zaukali I drugs, Watikum Zausela I 3TC, never rapping, AZT. After two weeks, the bar right in the Kwazo Pakam, Gogundia Vuya, Tipili, I drugs, I ARVs. The government had at least listened to our cries and we thank them for that. We are at war, not with the government, but with the deadly killer disease, HIV and AIDS. But it soon became clear that the Minister of Health, Mandosha Balalam Simang, was aligning herself with the president, openly supporting the activities of prominent AIDS denialist, Tina van der Maas. At this meeting in Kailicha, the minister refers to a video made by van der Maas. You will see that the group that has been working on garlic, on lemon, they want to choose vitamins they can, but I can tell you, I have also seen, I've promised a development uh, forum, Uting Zabaniga, a video, where they can see for themselves. Hi, this is Nelly van der Maas, my mother and my best friend. Van der Maas claims that a diet of beetroot, garlic, olive oil, and other supplements can reverse the condition of someone with full-blown AIDS to an HIV-positive status. She claimed that antiretrovirals were toxic and encouraged people to stop taking them. And also activates the immune system. This one, three tablespoons in the morning. The minister asserts that people should be given a choice of treatment of either nutrition, micronutrients, or ARVs. If the antiretrovirals can do so and you accept them, leave other people to choose what they want. If they want to eat properly so that they can boost their immune system, so be it. This is a free country. You choose what you want. She remains silent on the benefits of ARVs instead emphasizing their problems. Ama antiretrovirals have got serious effects, side effects, they do. Unlike in nutrition, nutrition has no side effects. It can't be that your government is not doing good things. It cannot be. In reality, thousands of people who had been dying of AIDS have got their lives back thanks to ARVs. And healthcare workers know that antiretrovirals are saving lives, preventing children from being orphaned, and allowing people to go back to work. The TAC has always stressed that people living with HIV-AIDS need both food and antiretrovirals. <laughs>